Did you know that in 1977, one of the most popular bands in the country released a masterpiece? And this critical and commercial hit was not only as harmonically sophisticated as any of its jazz contemporaries, uh, but it was a huge commercial success for the band. What is it that made it so harmonically sophisticated? How can we use some of that sophistication in our playing? And how did they get away with it on a pop album? These are things we're going to dive deep into today as we dig into Steely Dan's Harmonic Genius. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, welcome to the, the guided practice session for today. We are digging into one of my favorite albums of all time, 1977's Asia by the immortal Steely Dan, Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. Uh, just want to give a shout out here. These guided practice, guided practice sessions are sponsored by Open Studio. Go to openstudiojazz.com. Of course, what's up to all my double dippers here today practicing with me that were with me earlier? over on openstudiojazz.com. Let's get into it. Well, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about one thing that happens again and again, especially on Steely Dan's Asia. It's a technique that they use to great effect. And I think when you hear it, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's those chords. That's those Steely Dan chords. So here's how today's gonna go down. We're gonna listen to what I'm talking about. We're going to break it down a little bit and then we're going to practice it. I've got a PDF here. You can download that in the chat. You can get it in the description. Check it out for yourself. Look at those guys. Look at that. That's like 1974, I think, or something. That's just great. That's what we're doing today. We're working on some Steely Dan, some Asia, where you're going to check out what they're up to harmonically. Well, what are they up to harmonically? Let's check out our very first example of their harmonic genius. This is from Peg. Check it out. This is, this is what we're talking about today. Okay, that's worth listening to again. But this time, listen to the keyboards. Listen to the top note of the voicings and listen to the root of the chords. You're going to notice a pattern start to emerge here on what we're working on. These top notes, these upper extensions, stays the same while the bass note moves chromatically down. And they do this in a pattern. Uh, it's brilliant. And it's not just like their idea. This has been done before especially in jazz context, but I don't think it's ever been done before this in such a huge pop record. Uh, so check it out again and listen for those voicings on the keys. Check that out. This is Peg. You know what I mean? How great is that? So that's what we're doing today. There's some more examples of this too. So let's check out Black Cow. This time there is an E6-9 chord going to this e, uh, D-sharp, sharp nine, right? And that F-sharp on top stays the same the entire time. Let's check it out. All 
Again, it's just that one little thing that happens, just that seems so clear, right? Hear that again. So, so good. And again, one more example of this. Uh, this is a, a different way to do this, though. This is just a little bit different way to do this. This is the same kind of thing where we can see this top note is going to stay the same. This is from Deacon Blues. But this second chord, it's not a dominant chord, right? It's not like a, a flat 13. It's more of a minor 7 sharp 5, right? Well, you'll hear it for yourself. Let's check it out. Let's check that out again. One more time. Listen to that the top note of this guitar voicing and the bottom note of the bass moving down. Check it out. I mean, it's so good. Don't you want to listen to this album now? It's such a classic and it's just incredible. So one of the ways I think they got away with using such sophisticated harmony, not just this technique, which is what we're going to focus on today, but you know, all of their music, but especially Asia is harmonically sophisticated. If you really check it out, a lot of their melodies stay nice and simple and diatonic and they change these chords to, to be more sophisticated around the simple melodies. It's something we can maybe break down in further GPSs, but it's just fantastic. But what I want to work on today is this technique of the chords. This technique of having the top note of a voicing stay the same as the chord changes is something we use all the time in jazz. You might think of something like, um, well, let's go back here, and you might think of something like... Um, something like this right we hear this in in jazz compositions all the time but we rarely hear something so sophisticated in such a pop classic all right let's break this down let's take a look at exactly what's going down here's peg so here's exactly what i was talking about and you could see it happening so here we have a g major nine chord right and the nine is on the top of the voicing and the root down a half step but that a stays the same so that f sharp seven becomes an f sharp seven sharp nine the nine of the g becomes the sharp nine of the f sharp and then they just transpose that down a whole step so here the root movement is just down chromatically but because this top note of the chord stays the same There's a bit of continuity there, right? There's a bit of, of, of to our ear, there's a sameness between those two that stays because of that top voice staying there. So check it out here on Deacon Blues. It's a similar vibe, but it's a whole different chord and it's a whole different note at the top. Instead of the nine, we have the fifth on top of our C major seven, right? And instead of a dominant seven chord, like a dominant seven sharp nine flat 13, we just have this minor seven sharp five chord, right? I actually kind of think about this chord as G add two over B. That's how I would think about it. I, I did a little research and all I found were people notating it like this, the chord symbol, but it's not really how I think about it. I think about this as a G over B with that nine in there, but whatever, the, the inharmonics of it and how we spell out the chord symbol is irrelevant. The shape and the sound is what is relevant. And it's this shape and sound. So there's Deacon Blues. It's just a different way to do a very similar thing. So there's that. If this is the kind of stuff that you want to see out of this channel before we go further, go ahead and smash that like button. Maybe hit the subscribe if you're really digging it. Uh, again, all of this is sponsored by Open Studio. You can go to openstudiojazz.com and download the PDF right here in the chat. 
and write in the description if you want to follow along because we're about to practice this. We're about to put this into action and let's do that now. Our first practice session. So if this is one of your first times here, you might not know that I use these as just my own excuse to practice how I want to practice. So sometimes I like to make these things my own. So our first voicing set, this is going to be like the peg style voicings. And I want to move down in whole steps, just like peg does. We'll do two different sequences, practice set one and practice set two for this. And I'm going to do a little bit different voicing structure than just the block chords that they do. Uh, just the three, five, seven, nine. I'm going to do a more open voicing because again, this is my own practice session. So I'm going to make this a little bit more uh, catered to what I want to use these for. And we're going to do the exact same structure. So our C major nine keeps that nine on top and we move to B7, sharp nine. And I'm going to throw in that flat 13 on there for more of an altered sound. And then we're just going to move down the octave in a whole tone scale this way. So we get to C major seven. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that great? Let's see what we got here. Let's start here. We'll start, let's start at 60. I like to start at a nice round number. You might shake it out a little bit. Get ready to practice here. We're going to go over these chords. We're going to get them in our playing with some beautiful spread voicings here. And again, the thing to think about through all of this is this top note is staying the same as the chords move down from our major seven to our dominant seven just stays the same as we go let's try this one two three Try it again. Two, three, and. Take it up a little bit in tempo. Just want to get this moving a little bit. One, two, three, and practice with me. Here. the other key so here's the thing when we practice this in the whole, whole tone scale we just need to do two different exercises and we hit all of the keys what if we did this a half step up right here let's take it back down we'll go down to 60. it's right here two three and and listen to that nine stay the same and become that sharp nine Check out what the seventh is doing on these. The seventh of the dominant chords stays the same into that major nine. I don't know, something to think about. Not super relevant. Try it again here. Two, three, and. Again, this is kind of the peg style.
more time. Three and. Take it up. 91 beats per minute. Let's try it. Two, three, and. Let's go back to that first key. Let's try it here again. Two, three, and. Starting on C. Lovely. So nice. All right, I'm gonna just toggle back and forth now. How about that second key? Two, three, and. Yourself, say the name of the chord um, unless there's someone in the room with you and then say it loudly as loudly as you can to make it seem like you might be a little bit crazy here we go one two three and d5 major 7 c7 b5 major b flat 7 a major a flat 7 g major All right, one more time of the original key starting in C, and we'll be all good. One, two, three, and. much fun is that that's a lot of fun there's one more version of this that I want to practice our practice set number two involves the changes from Deacon Blues now this has the fifth on top now I want to practice this in the way that Deacon Blues sets up in the intro there where they do this going down twice here and then they go up a whole step up from where they started but I want to keep going with that. See if we can get this pattern going all the way up. We'll take it all the way up the octave. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? These are so good. They sound so lovely, don't they? They just sound amazing. Um, so for any of my and harmonic police in here apologies if anything is not to your liking but i'm i usually just rely on what i think looks good and what what's easy for me to read so if it's not technically technically correct that's my bad you know i dropped out of conservatory so but this looks good to me i think this will be fun let's try it we'll try it Start at 60 again. 60. Play with me here. Let's do this all the way up. Two, three, and. Here we go up to D. The top note stays the same between these two chords. Up to E. Thank you. 
So some things to think about with this one particularly is that the top note stays the same. The root, of course, moves down in half steps. Right? But these middle notes in our right hand, the lower two notes of the right hand, they move down a whole step. So you might think about that. So while the left hand moves down a half step, those lower two notes on the right hand move down a whole step. Let's try it again. Two, three, and. tempos on this. One, two, three, and. It's funny, when you get close to that tempo, you can hear the tune. I mean, we really could do a harmonic breakdown on the entire tune of this. And all of Pig, and all of Black Cow, if we wanted to. It's all really interesting. Play with me. Try it one more time. This is pretty fast. One, two, three. So much fun. That's Steely Dan's harmonic genius and just huge, huge shout out to Donald Fagan and Walter Becker for the amazing, amazing, amazing music that they left us. Donald Fagan, of course, still making music sound good. Let's check out Deacon Blues again. Let's listen to it now that we've played through these changes and hear it again from the original. are good sounding roads. Let's check out Peg one more time. I seen your picture. If they can only get their studio production together, you know, 
It's just so raw sounding. Anyway, thanks everybody for practicing with me today. Like I said, download this PDF. So we listened, we broke it down, we practiced. PDF is in the description. It's in the chat. Check it out. Again, go to openstudiojazz.com if you want to learn more about everything we're doing here. Thanks so much for practicing with me today. I'll be back on Tuesday. Till then, happy practicing. Cheers, folks. See ya.